Hello. Um, <clears throat> it's 9 p.m. on a Saturday night, and I am out and ready to party. Just kidding. I have, like, such a week ahead of me, so this is, like, the only free time I have. So I'm doing a lot of stuff. But I have been wanting to uh, make a video about this topic, which is... Oh, I'm probably not going to edit this, so I'm, like, so nervous I'm going to say something wrong, because I normally edit the fuck out of my videos. Anyways, uh... I wanted to do a video about autism meltdowns, in particular, the possibility of self-harm and, um, I can't think of, like, the professional way to say it, just, like, wanting to hurt yourself when you're in the middle of a meltdown, like, you know, there's, like, the stereotype of, like, the little kid, like, banging their head, like, but obviously it goes much deeper than that, and when you get older, things change, and I just kind of want to make a video about that, uh, I'm talking on my webcam right now, which I don't like webcam videos, honestly, uh, but there's something about this video that feels like it needs to be done webcam style at 9 p.m. when I want to. I don't know. I had the impulse to make this video, and I was like, fuck it. I'm going to make this. It's a very vulnerable topic, so I normally don't like, I don't know, when there's like a camera, it's all set up, and I'm all like, I'm ready to film. It like feels on, and I feel like there's a spotlight, and then I censor myself, so I figured, fuck it. Ah, I'm gonna talk about this fucking topic when I want to, when I'm feeling ready and I have nothing planned. <laughs> but most, okay, what am I trying to say? The main gist uh, is just I want, I'm asking a question, and that question is does anybody else deal with self harm tend, or does anybody else on the spectrum, or anybody else? Uh, deal with self-harm tendencies when they're in the middle of a meltdown, about to start a meltdown, or da 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 uh, because that's something that I used to deal with when I was younger a lot. When I was younger, uh, and I'd be having what I now know is a meltdown, what I used to think was like a temper tantrum, uh, I would bang my head against my bed a lot, and pillow a lot. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember what else I do. I have a really bad memory. But I remember hurting myself a lot. I think I remember banging my, I still do this, uh, like banging my hand against the floor really hard. Uh, it's a pressure thing. Uh, I've never had like self-harm cutting tendencies. It's always been like a, a, a need for like the, the pressure, the big like, like bruises, like that kind of stuff. I guess, just because, um, okay, what, I'm trying, I'm going to my timeline, then we'll talk about it later, okay, <laughs> and then when I got older, that's, like, a weird thing to do, so I kind of made myself not do that, uh, and I would, I don't know, when I got older, I was also trying to, like, minimize my meltdowns as much as possible, so a lot of times I would just have, like, shutdowns, just try to do almost nothing, but then when I got my autism diagnosis, I kind of allowed myself then to have the meltdowns as I wanted and not censor myself as much. Of course, there's always going to be censoring with meltdowns because if there wasn't, we'd probably be like screaming at the top of our lungs, which I still do and like flailing and just like ridiculous. Like sometimes it feels like you can't even get it all out when you're in a meltdown. Have you ever had that experience? Let me know. Like, I've had ones where I'm just like, oh, and I'm like, I don't, like, I don't have the physical capacity to get out everything that I need to, uh, and, and, uh, yeah, but that's where the physical stuff comes, but what I'm saying, okay, so when I let myself experience meltdowns, uh, more, I found, uh, having so much internal energy that I don't know how to get out, I don't know how to express, uh, and I don't feel relieved if I just cry. It got to a point where, it gets to a point very easily, very quickly, where just crying and screaming isn't getting things out enough. And it feels like there's this inner kind of restlessness that you almost need to feel some sort of like physical pain to go along with your emotional pain, I guess. Like you need, it's a sensory thing. Like you need a sensorial pain to reflect the internal pain, uh, which is, like, self-harm, right? Uh, but it almost doesn't feel like self-harm, though, uh, because, well, maybe this is self-harm. I don't know much about it, honestly. I'm talking about this because the only kind of self-harm that's really talked about is, like, cutting and stuff, and I don't have any experience with that, so, and I, and I don't have any, I've never had any single impulse to do any sort of, like, blood thing. It's always just been, like, wearing myself, like, up against a wall. Okay, wait, I'm sorry, I'm getting... Uh, off track again. I'm not editing, so I'm, like, trying my best to string these together correctly. But, okay, so I, um, 
yeah, you feel all this inner restlessness, and it's like, it, 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 there's no other way of getting it out. There is no other way, and if you don't let it get out, then you just, the only way that I, I, I will try to not do it, and I'll, like, sit in my bed in the middle of the month, and just be like, don't let yourself hurt yourself, don't let yourself hurt yourself, like, you don't, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it, but, like, that just creates even more of a need to do it in this inner like restlessness and just remember being like and then you just go into a shutdown but that shutdown you still feel it just bubbling in you and there's just it just gets to a point where it's like if anybody talks to you or anybody does anything if you move anything like you will be so easily triggered into just running and what I tend to do is like ram this part of my arm like I go like this and I like ram it and I ram myself into a wall as fat like as hard as I can sometimes I'll like slam my hands on things I still do that I once like head butted stuff that was mostly in my childhood uh I don't know just uh yeah mostly stuff like with like ramming myself like mostly uh like arm pressure stuff I also like somebody like pushing me me pushing back but honestly nothing fulfills the need to get rid of whatever's inside me except for hurting myself as hard as I can and then like it's that like numbness that comes with it where like you're so physically exhausted and like my arms will feel completely numb and like I won't be able to feel them because they're just completely kind of like enwrapped in pain and your body like I have asthma so like I'm breathing heavy and like my body's just so physically exhausted that it can't do anything else like I need to just completely exert all of that internalized energy just to be able to get on with my life. So then I like, I'm like, oh, and then I'm like, oh, and then after I kind of recuperate, I'm like, oh, I feel better. Like I feel so much better. Uh, oh, that was like, that's the only way to solve it. And I brought this up with my therapist and I'm like, I'm concerned about it though. Like I don't like that I'm hurting myself. I don't, and a lot of it is also fueled by the self-hatred, of course. Like you feel like you need to hurt yourself because you feel like uh, you just hate yourself a lot and you just feel like you suck, you know what I mean? self-harm uh and I'll talk to this with my therapist and she doesn't really seem I've talked to this through two therapists actually I'm like I don't know what to do about this like I don't want to hurt myself like you know like I'm sitting there like on my bed like don't hurt yourself Shana don't hurt yourself Shana like don't do that to yourself and but like there's no other way to make myself feel better and until I do that you know self-harm activity uh I won't feel better and when after I do I feel better like it's the only solution and I can't find any other solution and, and people say like well what if you got like my roommate is like you need to get pads like get pads and punch me and I don't know do that kind of stuff and I'm like but that I need the pain and that's the issue is like yeah it's great like I like the pressure he'll like make me try to like get out of like a grip and that helps but it helps alongside also hurting myself does that make sense like that helps tremendously and I really and it helps get it all out and release that energy but I'm but that's only releasing energy there's something about that intake of pain like you need that intake and that out like that in and out like I need both sides and like punching something is only like out but like getting hurt is like in you know and I need both and so I don't know what to do about it and nobody seems very concerned about it except for my roommate who's like seen me do it because it's so scary I'm sure he's like terrified when watching me like if he were to do it I'd be like ah and so like he'll stop me and he doesn't want me to do it which is understandable why would he uh I wouldn't want anybody that I loved or was friends with or my family or just anybody that I fucking knew their name <laughs> I would not want them to do that <laughs> um but I don't know what else to do and he, and he doesn't know what else to do and my therapists are like well just observe it a little bit more that's what they always say they're just like just observe it see what happens and I'm like but I am observing it and that's what happens <laughs> so it just feels like nobody knows what to say so I'm just making this video just asking if anybody who's autistic or struggles with this kind of stuff uh like like, is this okay? Like, is this an okay thing to do? Like, should I just realize that I need to accept it and do it without all the self-hatred uh, and just be okay with it because it's what I need to do anyways and and I don't mind the bruises. It's not really affecting me. Like, I have a little bit of a bruise. Uh, this was from, like, probably a week ago, uh, so it's pretty much gone. But I also had, like, it was a big one, like, all along here, but that's gone because that was a while ago, too. Because that's the only thing it really does is, like, leave a bruise, but, like, that doesn't really matter. I don't really care about bruises. Like, just a bruise. I don't know. Uh, doesn't, like, you know, I'm not, like, scarring or anything. And, like, 
So I, I don't know. Is it something that I shouldn't be concerned about? Is it just something that I should accept and stop hating myself for so much and feeling weird about and uncomfortable about? Or is it something I should feel weird and uncomfortable about because there's some deeper problem here that I should be addressing? Well, probably both. Should I not do it? Should I try to make myself not? Because that just does not seem like the solution. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to say with this. Um, just, just share your experiences. Even if you don't have any need for this, tell me that. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just curious. Uh, yeah, so I'm not going to end this video, and I'm just going to post it right now. Uh, yeah. Bye.